first off, uh, I want to thank the grace of heaven and the virtues of the masters, <clears throat> the mercy of the grand predecessor, predecessors, uh, transmitting masters, and everyone here today for this opportunity to talk about uh, the six paramitas. Um, actually, before we talk about this, I just wanted to mention one thing because <laughs> um, today is actually an anniversary of our uh, he, he wasn't our predecessor, but he, he kind of represented uh, because our predecessor had passed uh, in 1972. So, <clears throat> but um, our senior transmitter, Choi uh, in Taiwan, um, so he, he was kind of uh, uh, taking over the duties as, as predecessor, I guess, later on. Um, but he, he also passed away in 2007 years ago. Yeah, seven years ago today. Uh, at least on the the Western calendar. So uh, his Le Dao Zhenjing is his title. So <clears throat> anyways, just want to mention that because today happens to be the day. All right, uh, let's get back. Okay, so six parameters. Um, uh, okay, so yeah, I mean, we talk about <laughs> cultivation and this is yet another um, uh, practice okay so cultivation is is the practice okay so so six parameters is another um, um i guess another set of practices that uh for us to achieve buddhahood uh, it's it's basically we must do <laughs> okay um uh, now you know here it says you know so you know, we we have to no one can save us right except for ourselves so we have to besides talking about it, we have to walk walk the walk right so or walk the talk whatever <clears throat> um so that that's what cultivation is about it's not just book learning getting knowledge um but it's really applying it okay uh so uh and it is just kind of a brief kind of a review uh of uh, these are from some previous slides from some previous uh, classes but uh get to Buddhahood, right? <clears throat> so we we are talking about Bodhisattva, the Bodhisattva path, or the Bodhisattva way and the Buddha way, right? <clears throat> um, and that's what we call the Mahayana. Uh, yeah, as opposed to like Theravada or Hinayana, which which is kind of more cultivation for oneself only. But you know that that's it's not. We're in a different time period now where uh, it's really. This white era where it's universal uh, salvation, so we need to save, um, you know, try to save as many sentient beings as we can, and that that would be what a bodhisattva would do. So, <clears throat> um, now, uh, oops, ah, sorry. Okay, so uh, you know, bodhisattva means it's an awakened sentient being, right? <clears throat> Just. Uh, and so awakened to what though? I mean, it's basically uh, someone is enlightened and want to transform delusion into wisdom. So we sentient beings are pretty much deluded, uh, you know, some <laughs> some more so than others, but uh, still we're del deluded about a lot of things. We don't really understand the, the truth. Uh, and so that's why we're here to, you know, we're here to learn. Uh, and to to use our wisdom to guide us okay uh, to to see through the the falsehoods and the delusion right. uh and then uh you know to to kind of foster or nurture that bodhicitta which is the mind of awakening right that that's <clears throat> hopefully everyone you know strives for that we want to strive for buddhahood right to benefit and it's not just for ourselves Right, but that that would be the other the other path, uh, uh, but to to benefit all sentient beings. Okay, so that's kind of a, the distinction you can say between the Mahayana and the uh, Theravada or the Hinayana. Okay, so um, so yeah, again, Mahayana is the great vehicle of cultivation, which we're going to try to save other people, uh, not just ourselves. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. Uh, and again, you know, a Bodhisattva makes. Uh, basically variations on these four vowels okay so the, but these are the, kind of the, the generic vowels uh they make um and okay i mean we i've talked about these before previous classes so um but you 
basically, uh, you can say like the first two are kind of, ex you can say external, dealing with others, dealing with sentient beings. And then the, the letter, the second two are more, you can say more internal. Okay, it's, it's for uh, improving the self. Um, although, you know, doing doing the other two, the, the first two also helps us to uh, <clears throat> improve ourselves too, anyways. All right. Um, and then, you know, they express these four immeasurable minds, all right, <clears throat> or they have these four immeasurable minds, it's kind of qualities of the, of a bodhisattva or Buddha. All right. So, uh, you know, all, all, every practice, all the practices, the cultivation is, you can say kind of based on these four things. Um, <clears throat> okay. So I mean, loving ki kindness compassion, this happy joy to, to be able to rejoice, um, the welfare of others, uh, and this mind of equanimity and also relinquishment, being able to give up things and then and also give to others. So uh, basically all, all of these in some combination, um, you know, uh, that we would apply in all our practices, okay, and, we'll, and, and our cultivation, okay. <clears throat> Uh, and then, of course, you know, the, the, so these are just some of the bodhisattvas that you've probably heard of. Um, the, the, the more well-known, I mean, they're, they're mahasattvas, actually. They're great bodhisattvas, okay? So, I mean, there are probably uh, many, uh, well, in actually, in this white era, uh, there are other uh, bodhisattva, uh, well, people are uh, like predecessors, are pre you know, predecessors, and also maybe some transmitting masters who uh attain the stat you know they attain Tao they return to heaven and they achieve attain the status of a bodhisattva okay so so we know there are a bunch of a lot of those during this white era um but you know in the whole universe there there are countless there are probably countless numbers of bodhisattvas so uh, we we just don't know about them um okay <clears throat> uh okay so uh basically what we cultivate, uh, you know, the, the kind of the basic thing that we have to know is the Four Noble Truths, right? And kind of as a corollary to that is the causality and karma. Okay, you have to, because that's, you can say that's kind of part of that, right? Uh, and also, okay, so that's kind of understanding the truth, the the, the reality of things. And then the the, the practice so it said that you know the six par paramitas is uh, the practice, or or at least part of the practice of bodhisattvas. Okay, <clears throat> um, all right. So basically, it is to uh, well, uh, well, I'll talk about what, what it means. But it, it's trying to to reach the other sh shore, right? That's the Buddhist, <coughs> um, uh, I guess, analogy or metaphor that they use is that we're in this bitter sea and. Or, or we're on this one shore, and then we want to cross over to the other shore, which is the shore of enlightenment, um, transcending this this cycle of birth and death, and, and you know, out of this samsara, the, the suffering world. Okay, uh, and the, yeah, paramitas actually means uh, well. One you, you can say one translation is says it, it's it's perfection. Okay, talking about perfection, so we uh, we want to perfect ourselves in certain ways. Uh, or using certain practices to perfect ourselves, uh, and then we can transcend, uh, become a bodhisattva or Buddha. Uh, <clears throat> the other side of thing, uh, well, another part of that is to to be free from self, the ego, okay, the ego, and attachments. Uh, attachments, obviously, attachments to the ego, uh, to the self, and then attachments to to other things as well. Any the other things, <clears throat> and then they say so. Uh, it's basically we want to be free or uh, from the attachment from from the body, you know, this physical body and the aversion to suffering. That's uh, uh, so that's why a bodhisattva is willing to come back into this world to be reborn into this world to to try to help save sentient beings. Okay, so they're not uh, averse to suffering in this world. Okay, so but most people, of course, are afraid of that. <laughs> Uh, they they don't want to come back, um, but um, but as a bodhisattva, you know, as long as they're sentient beings, they they're going to want to come back to to say help save them. 
Uh, and then, you know, the phys- you know, associated with those is the physical death, of course, and then transformational death is, well, transforming, going through other uh, paths of being, of existence, okay. Um, <clears throat> and, okay, and it's kind of having this mind that is all-inclusive, so, you know, the, the four immeasurable minds that we mentioned earlier. Um, right, so all sentient beings, because all everyone... Well, all, yeah, all sentient beings have that Buddha nature. Okay, so they are, uh, th- they, you can say, they, they are potential Buddhas. Okay, they, they can become Buddhas. <clears throat> um, right, in the past I've said that really the only, I mean, the only difference between sentient being and a Bodhisattva or a Buddha is that, uh, I mean, internally the, the, essence is th- is the same there's no there's absolutely no difference it's just that the bodhisattva or buddha is awakened is uh, they're enlightened okay so it's kind of like we have to kind of get to that uh, state of mind <clears throat> all right so these are the six paramitas um so it's broken down into these, yeah, they, <clears throat> I mean, uh, you know, the, the various different practices, the, it's like, it's kind of like different, you can say there, you can kind of categorize things a little bit differently, okay. Uh, but so this is where it says, you know, you have to do, uh, the first one is charity, okay, or giving um, uh, the parentheses inside the parentheses, that's the Sanskrit term. Um, I think it's Dana or Dana. I know. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then you have precepts, uh, which you can say is moral discipline. All right. So sila, <clears throat> uh, forbearance and patience, uh, uh, santi, uh, diligence and vigorous effort. So virya, uh, concentration, samadhi, uh, which is diana, and then wisdom, which is prajna. Okay. So, so you can see that some of these kind of, they overlap with like other uh cultivation practices that we talked about before like the you know, what is the four courses of cultivation or uh the five well even the five like requirements to return to heaven they, they include some of these right so um, mainly like the precepts and forbearance um but it's not to say that these are i mean these are all required it, it's hard to say you know the, the thing is that <laughs> we can't it, it again depends on it's like it's like you have a pie and then you're cutting up the pie and you can cut it up in different ways and then so that that's that's why you know that that's how it is but okay um okay so uh the other the other oh right so the 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 six um it, it's not like you Although we can do each, you know, different ones, like giving, for example, that's, you can say that's kind of somewhat independent of the others. Although I do say here that wisdom must be applied in all practices, in all cases. So so when we're giving, we don't just give blindly, right? We, we still have to use our wisdom and, you know, when, when to give, you know, uh, perhaps, you know, so... Um, wisdom is kind of, I mean, you might say it's underlies all of them. Uh, so precepts, <clears throat> forbearance, diligence, and concentration. Now you might say that also perhaps, um, I don't know, you, you could say that maybe sometimes, you know, forbearance, well, it depends. I mean, forbearance is a little bit more, uh, uh, has a narrower definition here, but, um, uh, but potentially, you know, like patience, <laughs> Uh, if you if you kind of broaden it a little bit, or uh, say patience, uh, you know that that can apply to the other ones too. So so it's like all of them kind of you can say they, they kind of work together. I mean, uh, you can you can focus and, and kind of do one, um, but ultimately, uh, it, what we'll practice is the combination of all of them. Okay, <clears throat> um, together. Uh, Right, and and then uh, the, the the length of the bar that it's not. Uh, <laughs> the, I mean, it, it, I didn't mean to like try to quantify any of these things, but uh, certainly when we apply it with the wisdom that you know that, that that it's not an absolute, right? So so they say in the Chinese they say the liu du wan xing. Okay, so it's basically the six parameter or the six I don't know six degrees six whatever parameters and the the thousands of 
of actions to arise from these. So, <clears throat> so even though there's six here, but the application, how they're applied, uh, you can say it's like infinite ways of app applying them. Okay, so uh, so that that's what kind of I'm trying to get at there. Um, okay. All right. So, um, so today I think we're just going to talk about the, the the first one. Okay, charity or giving. <clears throat> um, now the chief examiner at three realms. He says, you know, we we should learn, you know, five sacrifices of the saints and sages. Um, basically, to sacrifice material wealth is great righteousness. Okay, to sacrifice our reputation is great benevolence to sacrifice uh family love is great kindness to sacrifice our life um of course that's great courage and to sacrifice merit uh, is, is great wisdom so <clears throat> i mean it's it we don't necessarily have to make big sacrifices <laughs> sacrificing our life for example or family uh but <clears throat> uh, certainly there is um, quote unquote merit or, or virtue in 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 these sacrifices. Um, in a way, you can say giving is a type of sacrifice. Um, maybe it's not. It depends on what you're giving. Uh, you know, as to how big a sacrifice that might be. But uh, you know, so again, this is you apply wisdom in in the sacrifice. Uh, you know, it's it's good. Well, <laughs> I mean, if we go as far as to sacrifice our life, uh, you know, I hope we, we we have to do do it for a good. There's a good cause or a good reason. Okay, so I mean, if we can sac if we sacrifice our life to save uh, a number of other sentient beings or people, uh, then you know that could be worth it. Uh, but it, it depends. But again, you know, we don't necessarily have to do that necessarily, but it certainly takes great courage to do that. Um, uh, reputation. So we, <clears throat> we 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 talk about some other cultivators, like in the Seven Daoist Masters, where they kind of uh, sacrifice their reputation in order to achieve their goal of of uh, attaining the Tao. You know, the, uh, um, so um, the, yeah, and also of course they they give up their material, sacrifice their material wealth. Uh, things like that, even yeah, in the family. So, <clears throat> so they've done these things, uh, and to achieve greatness, we have to know how to sacrifice. All right, uh, merits also is you know it's the sacrifice of merits. <clears throat> Basically, we don't necessarily we we should not become attached to merits. All right, uh, and be able to let go, or um, perhaps you can say we give our merits to others okay <clears throat> um it uh, doesn't mean that when we give them away that, that we don't have it uh, actually but the, the the act of giving right the act of giving is is also uh merit so uh or virtue so um so we're not losing everything right so <clears throat> so uh, it takes a lot takes a lot of wisdom to to realize this right okay <clears throat> uh okay so um holy teacher talks about uh, this is actually from a uh, a, uh it's from uh, uh i guess a channeling in 2006 uh, yeah 2006 in singapore okay so um so all he takes talking about <clears throat> he's saying uh loyalty filial piety benevolence righteousness are the fundamental principles in the spirit of cultivation okay so he's saying that you know these these four basic uh, yeah, you could say vir these are virtues. Okay, <clears throat> so these are part of the eight virtues uh, that we Confucius talks about, right? Uh, the simplest step in cultivation is charity or giving. Okay, so so that is why all uh, re religions, right? Religious teachings, they they all talk about charity. They they all they all um, whether they. <laughs> It's more like uh, where they say, "Oh, you have to do it," um, <clears throat> or it's encouraged, um, but but they all talk about that. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> basically, so and so here we say that it's the simplest step. Yeah, because everyone can do this. Right, this is not you don't have to necessarily know a lot 
and you don't have to, you know, in terms of knowing the principles or knowing, uh, uh, yeah, having, you know, not a lot of knowledge, <clears throat> but you, you know, we, can, we can all perform charity. Uh, so that's why it's the simplest step in cultivation. Okay. Um, now, Holy Teacher also says that cultivation is not just talking about the surface meaning of words. It, it's about awakening and realizing the true meaning and principles behind the words. So we talk about charity or giving. Uh, it, it sounds very simple. Okay. But uh, there's actually a more, I guess, deeper uh, meaning. Um, and maybe more subtle nuances that we don't typically think about uh and, and we, we you know yeah we normally don't probably don't know about them and so so actually in this uh there's a scripture i i uh from all the teachers that he's talking about this okay um so but this is actually true of any anything that we we learn or, or a lot of this like the scriptures or the sutras uh from the Buddhas and saints, um, that there is, we have to, we can't just look at the surface meaning of the words or this, you know, the superficial, what it looks, appears to be. Uh, there could be, uh, usually that's like the, you can say the, the, yeah, the superficial or external. And then there's also potentially an internal aspect or, or meaning uh, behind things. Okay. So that that's something that uh, we have to awaken to or realize. Okay, so um, so it's not just simple knowledge. Um, perhaps that you know requires again. You could say that requires a wisdom on our part um, and having that insight. Uh, okay, so he uh, says that true principles are a way to lead people out of confusion and ignorance. Yeah, um, <clears throat> that's uh, that's that's what all these Tao principles that we learn. Uh, you know, you know, starting with what Buddha's talks about, the Four Noble Truths, uh, you know, Noble Eightfold Paths, all that, uh, all these principles that we talk about, uh, they are to lead basically sentient beings who are confused uh, in this world uh, to get them out of that ignorance, okay? <clears throat> uh, and then the true principles must, but they, they also must be realized and experience. So it's not just knowledge. We have to, uh, I say a lot that we, we, we need to internalize. <clears throat> okay, internalize. Internalize, again, is, is you can say that what I'm meaning is like awakening the realization, the inner realization of what it is. Okay. Uh, and, and in a way, also, you could, we could say that uh, experience, okay, so we have to live it Okay, we live it, then we experience it. It's not just oh, some knowledge that you just heard and learned about, uh, but it's used in <clears throat> our our life. Okay, um, <clears throat> so that that's important. All right. Okay. So then goes into the formal scripture here. Uh, uh, so it says uh, the first thing says uh, spreading virtues starts with one's own virtuous conduct. Um, giving comes from the heart, All right? <clears throat> uh, yeah. So when we talk about virtues, um, you know, we we have to make sure that we are an example. I mean, we 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 set the example. Okay. So 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 it's not like we we talk about. We talk the good talk, but we don't do it, uh, so that 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 won't work. I mean, people. <clears throat> now, of course, we we are all learning. I mean, we're not perfect, and and so so although we are talking about these principles, and we may not necessarily be practicing them. I mean, we haven't perfected them, that's for sure. Um, but uh, but we you know we have to. But we must. I mean, we. I mean, what I mean, we we have to practice. I mean, we have to um, cultivate. Okay, these these virtues. <clears throat> um, otherwise, you know, what we say is just going to be just blank, you know, just just empty talk. Okay, and people won't they, they won't necessarily listen, right? So, so that's that's important. And <clears throat> so, in the, in the case of the giving uh, or this charity, it does come from it has to come from the heart, from within. So just that sincerity in giving. Okay, so it's not uh, get, well, 
Now, a lot of giving, well, I don't know. Uh, I, I imagine at least some giving is is kind of superficial, okay? It doesn't come from the heart. It's not sincere. It's just oh, giving because uh, maybe that's just the, the custom, like, <laughs> like in Christmas, you know, or someone's, uh, the, you know, the, the, there's the giving of presents all the time. But, uh, of course, we, you know, that, that's kind of become a commercial thing right now. But uh, is it really sincere? Okay, so it, it's not really the, the what or the how much that's given. It's what's more important is where it's coming from coming from that true sincere that sincerity okay and that's what that's what heaven that's what the buddhas look at okay so it's not really um the amount or w what it is that we're giving uh as long as it's coming from our heart right there, there, there are those stories that we talked about before you know mentioned before of like the uh in buddhist time where <clears throat> Or this actually applies to to other like Jesus' time as well, where the stories of um, people are donating things, but the person who has basically has nothing, and, and they just donate the, the tiniest amount, uh, the smallest amount, and yet they have because they were so sincere that they were recognized by by Buddha or by Jesus, uh, you know, as having the greatest virtues. So, so that is. Uh, essentially, so it's the you can say it's the quality that inner quality is most important. Okay, uh, not the external thing. <clears throat> and then, so uh, kindness is an inherent duty, right? Giving establishes good affinity. Uh, yeah, so kindness is something that we must do. Uh, that we we sh everyone should be have some kindness. <laughs> so have that kindness. Okay, so. Um, you know, kindness could come out of compassion, I guess, um, uh, um, and mercy, right? <clears throat> um, but that that is kind of basic. That is who we are. I mean, that that's the the Buddha coming from the Buddha nature. And so, as human beings, uh, that is it should be part of us, uh, right? <clears throat> and so that that's that's inherent. It, it should not have to come out of. Uh, you know, other people don't, shouldn't have to tell us we have to be kind, right? Um, and shouldn't have to have laws or, or rules that say, hey, you have to be kind. Okay, so this is inherent. It's, it's something that's in inside that we already have the ability, uh, and, and it is our duty, really. Um, <clears throat> now, now, when we do give, uh, we do establish good affinity with, with those that we give to. Okay, so that's, that's also... Um, uh, so that's that's you can say that's a good thing, right? <clears throat> um, uh, when we're giving, giving kindness, giving uh, whatever it is that we're giving, uh, as then that will establish good affinity, um, and that is how we can potentially, uh, you know, it, influence. You know, um, I guess influence people. Eventually, we can ferry people, right? If we if we don't know. A person we don't know someone uh, we just met the person um you know maybe it's a neighbor um uh, and you know you, you just do some uh be kind to them and uh, and you can also give them uh things you know whatever it is you know fruits food um uh, uh and that will establish a good affinity with them uh and then maybe one day when there's the, the with the proper the right timing and opportunity that you know you'd be able to ferry them okay so uh and so and no matter what we you know the good affinity we don't want to do any bad affinity because that uh you know the the it's got it's going to come back and and get us later on okay whether in this life or maybe a future life so the good affinity at least you establish this good you know he's planting a good seed for the future uh, and uh, potentially you know if you did something good for them uh, in the future they'll 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 return the favor okay uh, I, although that's not what we're looking for um, is, is just that uh, if, if the timing is not right for for the person you know there, there are many people who, who are unable to receive the Tao now <clears throat> but but we want to have maintain a have a good affinity with them so that maybe one day they can all right <clears throat> 
uh, uh, we should have no attachments after performing good deeds. <clears throat> okay. Uh, accumulate blessings are balanced. All right. So uh, this is basically saying, you know, when, when we perform a good deed uh, or when we do, or, you know, like, like giving, if we do a charity, there's always three, three parts to it, right? It's the I, I giving something to someone else. Okay, so so there's the three, the, the I part, the ego, you can say the self, uh, the, the object of the giving and uh, or the deed, uh, and then also the on the receiving end, whoever is receiving that. Um, so we should not have any attachment to any any of those three. <laughs> So uh, sometimes we we say, oh, uh, yeah, I remember I I I helped you, you know, I I gave you something uh, in the past. Um, so maybe expecting something, you know, a, 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 pay, a payback or something. Um, but so we have to let go of those, um, and also let go of the fact that oh, I gave so much. Um, uh, and then also, and then finally, it's that ego that we have to let go of, uh, that there is no self here. <clears throat> uh, then, then that becomes true merit. Okay, so we we talked about this before. Um, true merit. Uh, it, it, it's you can say when this non-attached uh, performing of good deeds without, uh, yeah, basically non-attached have no attachments at all, even to like having a motivation or intention, none, none of that stuff, uh, then that's what we, you know, we call it wu wei, all right? So we, we talked about that, the effortless action or whatever, this natural uh, action coming from that Buddha nature. And then, so this, if we can have no attachments, then the blessings that we accumulate will be boundless, okay? So this, and these blessings, of course, that's heaven uh, that are, uh, well, the, the heaven will give it to us, give, you know, um, give us these blessings. Okay. Um, now, giving is the first parameter of cultivation, right? The other shore can be right in front of us. So, so again, this is like the first step, if you will, the, the giving or the charity. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so, and, and it is like that basic uh, practice of of all any type of cultivation, uh, you know, uh, of any kind of cultivation practice is the most you can say the most basic, most uh, maybe fundamental. Um, and by taking this step by uh, of giving, um, then we can reach the other shore that we're we're seeking. You know, we're trying to reach that other shore of enlightenment of of you know, nirvana. Or, um, and so so that's why that so that's like the first. That's the first parameter. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, and uh, actually, the first four of these uh, characters, um, and these, these are, I, yeah, okay. So I, I, it's basically says, okay. So yeah, that's basically saying, it's basically saying this. Okay. So <clears throat> that, that uh, giving and charity is, you know, that that's the, the entering into this path of Tao. Okay or cultivate, Tao cultivation. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so now Holy Teacher is kind of goes into kind of talking about more of the, you can say the subtle nuances of <laughs> giving and charity. Okay. Right. We, we think of it as very simple. I just give something to someone uh, or, I mean, it could be words or other things. Um, but, you know, here, here Holy Teacher is talking about a little bit more detail. Um, okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, the first one here is charity is understanding and ability uh, to know and to carry out good intentions. Okay, so <clears throat> so it's not it's not just we going through this motion of giving and and, and doing charity. Uh, maybe someone tell us, oh yeah, this is this is what you got to do. Uh, that we have to understand, um, well, you know, why why we're doing this. Okay, why 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 give why why do charity? Okay. <clears throat> Uh, and then, of course, the the ability. I mean, we we have to 
uh, also, it's not just, you know, we learn about, oh, yeah, charity, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just like a, maybe a slogan or something. And, <laughs> but we have to we have to act on it. I mean, we have to carry it out. OK, so so, uh, you know, we have good intentions. Um, you know, we we, sh we need to carry them out. OK, so <clears throat> uh, otherwise it's not really useful to anyone. Right. Um, OK. <clears throat> and then so charity is doing. OK, again. Uh, to perform good deeds with whether their speech or actions uh, for the benefit of others. Okay, it's actually it's important to realize that it is for the benefit of others that we're doing things. So if we have some kind of uh, motivation for uh, doing this, uh, performing a good deed for personal gain, then I mean obviously it could be for be for the benefit of others, but but we're also uh, okay, so, but we, we don't want to have uh, the thought of, you know, getting any personal gain out of it. Again, that, that's going to, um, that's, will be the determinant of whether we get true merits or not. Okay, so, um, but definitely it has to be for benefit of others. Okay, so that we're doing this charity for. Um, and it could be words, you know, things that we say. So it's not necessarily giving material things. Um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, or or um, it could also be like uh, not not necessarily giving material things, but time and effort, right? Putting it, uh, um, spending time um, to to do something. Okay, all right. Uh, so charity is giving praise, right? To rejoice in and praise others at the right moment. <clears throat> um, yeah. So this in this case is it's kind of you could say words, I guess, uh, words of praise. Um, and we also, you know, to try to rejoice in the, the welfare of others when others have good, uh, well, when they, when they are blessed, when they have good blessings, we, we, we can uh, praise them. If they do good things, you know, we praise, we can praise them. Um, sometimes praise can be used as kind of an encouragement if maybe, <laughs> maybe what they're doing is, you know, usually like children, if they're, if they're not doing uh, great. I mean, they, they may be doing not so well, but they're trying. Uh, you know, sometimes you give them praise to 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 help help give them encouragement and, and confidence, right? <clears throat> so again, so the, again, we have to use wisdom, right, in how we apply these. Uh, charity is having a broad mind, or you can say magnanimity. Um, yeah, uh, very you know, generous. Uh, to to aid and support the weak and give to the poor. Okay, so so this is pretty much. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, what what most people think of you know when they do charity is, is kind of like in this case, <coughs> uh, giving to the poor. Um, uh, of course, they might be you know also supporting other types of um, other types of uh, causes, you know, whether. <laughs> Oh, uh, you know, like maybe uh, helping animals, you know, things like that. Okay, so but but anyways, it's the it charity. Uh, it broadens our mind. I mean, so we're we're not so egocentric, focused on ourselves, uh, but it's more on others. Okay, um, think about the welfare of others. Right. Okay, so charity is a path or a way. Right, it's to climb the ladder of Tao for the three vehicles of cultivation. Right, so the the three. I mean the Basically, the lower level is uh, so. No matter what what level or what vehicle of cultivation um, that we're in, uh, you know, charity is in all of them. Okay, so <clears throat> that we, I mean, we have to perform charity or giving in in all of the in whatever all these levels. Okay, so so you know, the lowest level, of course, is is just basically you know chanting and and. Uh, maybe yeah, maybe doing you know doing some good deeds, doing some charity to to look, seek a, a better uh, seek some current current blessings. Okay, so but but even at the higher level, you can say for for us uh, as Tao cultivators is you know we we are also um, we're ferrying people to receive the Tao to to be able to transcend the cycle of life and death. Uh, but charity is also an important aspect of our cultivation as well. Uh, you know, we again giving. Um, we we can give like teaching, right? Teach, talk about the Dharma, the teachings, the Tao principles. 
uh, that is also a form of charity. But you know, we could also uh, help others, just just like we previously said. Uh, you know, aid those who are poor, etc. Um, <clears throat> but but yeah, so charity again. So it, it is a basic uh, practice for for any type of cultivation. Uh, charity is performing merits, right? To expediently accumulate merits according to one's ability. Uh, again, you know, to, according to one's ability, right? So it doesn't mean that oh, you know, everyone has to donate a certain amount. Uh, it's not like that. Uh, it basically, um, you know, you 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 do according to what you can do, uh, and and again, that it's not. The important thing is not the amount, like we said earlier. It's it's the quality, right? It's where it's coming from, uh, and so um, we we shouldn't be a uh, you know embarrassed or ashamed that oh I, I can't donate as much as you know this Mister <laughs> Big Bucks who can donate you know a lot of money. Uh, <clears throat> that that doesn't matter. Okay, there's no we should not compare. There's no comparison here. Um, we should not compare with others. Um, as long as it comes from the heart, uh, that, that sincere uh, heart, that that's more important. Um, so this is how you know. So charity is one way to perform merits, right? Um, the giving uh, of things, and then uh, charity is a, is also a driving force to induce basic goodness in the heart. Yeah. So <clears throat> if we're not used to giving or charity, doing charity, um, then we should, you know, because that that then brings out that goodness in the heart, uh, in our heart. Okay. So, uh, that, that's, so that is why charity is such a, you can say a universal practice across all kind of religious, uh, you know, traditions. Um, <clears throat> charity is an essential start, right? To learn and progress in cultivation. Again, it's the basic thing that that's again, in, in all types of practices, uh, they use charity as the basic way, because everyone can do anyone, pretty much anyone can do it. Again, it's not, you don't have to have a uh, material wealth to be able to perform charity, right? You can perform charity in any way. Um, and also just, we mentioned that story earlier where, you know, you only give two pence or you give, uh, you know, your hair for, for, to, for the lamp wick, you know, in those stories, uh, it's what's, uh, the the inside the sincere ser, uh, the sincerity of the giving is is the most important thing okay but yeah so so that's but it's 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 a start it's somewhere some it's it's a place where everyone uh, it's easy for everyone to start doing charity as opposed to uh, some of the other practices that might be a little bit more uh, where you have to it, it's not as easy okay. All right, so charity has the effect of great leverage in nurturing the saintly by use of the worldly, right? So uh, what is uh, in the Chinese is ipen wan li, right? So, I, uh, so that's great leverage. Basically, you know, it's the, if you look at that phrase, it's basically, uh, you know, it's like making a small investment and getting a huge return from that. Okay, so that that's that's true. So, so when we perform, perform a charity or giving, uh, we might think, well, I, I'm only giving ten dollars, or I'm only giving something, some object, uh, but it's really, it's not just that. Okay, <laughs> uh, at the physical level, that's what it is. But uh, when it's translated into the true merits, <coughs> right, our virtues, then uh, it's a lot more. Okay, so that's why there's, it, it can, it's like this. It says the great leverage. Right, uh, in nurturing our, our saintly you, by the use of worldly, yeah. So we we have we live in this world, so we have to use we use these false. You know, you say, we we say that we have a false body. We we living in a false world, okay? Or it's a illusory. It's everything is an illusion, okay? But we uh, because we live here, we we must use these things, right? Uh, and um, you know, like in this world today, it's like, well, can you live without money? It's hard. Uh, so so you have to use the money. Uh, for a lot of basic things. <clears throat> uh, and so, but we make use of these, but again, don't become attached to them. Okay, so what we're trying to nurture is that saintly, that, that Buddha nature within us, okay, that, that saint or Buddha within us. 
Okay. <clears throat> uh, charity is the harmony of perfecting oneself and encouraging and helping others. Yeah. So uh, we, you know, in the process of charity or giving, we are, you know, we're, we're help uh, on the external side, we are helping others, maybe encouraging them, helping them. Okay. Uh, and by, by the giving, but at the same time, by giving, we are also perfecting ourselves internally. Uh, you know, the, the, that vert, the virtues that we have. Okay. So that's the, so it is, so it's the harmony of, of the two, the internal and the external aspects. Okay. <clears throat> um, so charity is the transfer of merits to eliminate karmic retribution, both visible and invisible, right? So we always say that we have to perform merits. Uh, so charity is one way to do that. Uh, and we can, when we do that, right, if we if we do it without attachment, without uh, any kind of uh, motive seeking, seeking uh, self-benefit or gain, then we get true merits and those merits can be used to eliminate our karmic retributions, our karmic debts, okay. Uh, you know, some of those are visible, uh, but probably a lot of them are also could be invisible, right, that we don't see. Uh, and so, but, but so charity, that's why charity is good. Uh, again, it's a good way uh, to, to do that. Um, and then charity is the process of getting good <clears throat> blessings and arousing the light of wisdom. <clears throat> okay, so uh, again, yeah, I mean, blessings, yeah, of course, we, we, we don't want to get like karmic blessings, we, we're not really seeking karmic blessings. Um, but at least, you know, when we do the previous one, the transfer, you know, if we do charity and, and we can use our merits to eliminate karmic retribution, then of course, then we are blessed, right? So we, we won't have those uh, potentially uh, bad things happening to us. Okay, so and uh, and it's also you know kind of allow us to uh, kind of uh, bring out our wisdom as well. Okay, um, so charity is reciprocity uh, to give and to gain, right? And the more you give, the more you gain. Okay, so this is kind of the, the that uh, you know uh, I don't know reciprocity would be it's it's a response. Okay, so. Um, Basically, you know, when, when we give, uh, we think that we're giving something, we're losing something, right? It's, it's, it's no longer in our hands, but we're gaining something in return, which is something invisible, maybe not as tangible. Uh, but, and, but that's, that's a basic principle. So it's, it's kind of it's the same, same as, yeah, you can say that that's very similar to the cause and effect um, principle. So. Uh, and then, so obviously, the more you give, then the more you're going to get back. Um, okay, but the, what we get back is, again, in those, in the, you can say the blessings or the the, the merits. Okay, so uh, so in a sense that maybe we we need to have some faith, right? Because what we're getting gaining is invisible. All right, we maybe we don't see it, at least not right away. Uh, but then we can maybe later see the effects of that. Uh, when our karmic debts are reduced and we don't suffer the retributions, right? <clears throat> okay, so charity is equality, right? You can transform your life and I can change my fate, right? So again, it's, it's uh, charity involves two parties, okay? Uh, and basically when we give to someone, right? That person can transform their lives with, with whatever we give them. Uh, and on... On the other side, we can change our fate as a result of giving. Okay, so so that's why. So it's like it, it's equally good. It's a win-win. Okay, so it's equally good for for both sides for everyone. Right. So so that's why it says here. Okay, so charity is inseparability to being happy and willing to give. All right. So it's important that when we're giving charity, uh, that we we are happy and willing. When we do it, okay. So it's not like, oh, I'm begrudgingly. So <clears throat> someone made me do it, to made me give something or to do some charity. Uh, then that again, again, you know, we were talking about the sincerity. Uh, so that's, uh, 
if we don't have that, well, of course, we don't have that sincerity. If we don't have that, we're not happy to give, we're not willing to give, uh, then there is no, there's, there's no true merit there. I mean, it, it may help the other person perhaps, but on our side, on the inside, maybe we don't really gain much. Okay, so um, so it's inseparable, right? So when we give, it should be willing. We should be willing to give and happy to give. <clears throat> uh, charity is the link from this shore to the other shore that cannot be severed. Okay, so again, this is very important saying that we, uh, we cannot get away from not doing charity, all right? So if we want to get to the other shore, charity is a basic, a fundamental, um, practice that we must perform, all right? Um, and so that, and that is what will allow us to reach the other shore, okay? Uh, okay, so charity is the importance of not thinking of self, right, when giving. So there's no ego, right? So we're not thinking about, oh, it, it's, you know, uh, how it relates to me, you know, what what, what, what is it going to, what am I going to get out of it or, or things like that. So the, the, we have to to get get rid of that <clears throat> okay so we can't think of having that self right so earlier holy teacher said right the three uh right the three parts right the 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 i the ego the the object or the deed of the giving and and also the 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 other person receiving okay uh so we should not have any attachment um a charity is to be unattached to to amount of, mater of material things allowing one to give okay so <clears throat> yeah, we have to be able to let go sometimes. Uh, you know, I'm afraid, ah, you know, well, they're asking me to donate that much. You know, it's like, eh, I have to consider that. Uh, actually, <laughs> you know, that that's our own attachment to 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 the, the material things, okay, and <clears throat> to money or whatever it is. Uh, we're just so attached to it that we say, ah, you know, that that sounds like ah, I'm not willing to give that much, <laughs> you know, but. Uh, if we can let go, get rid of those attachments, then uh, then we're we're able to give freely. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so uh, okay. So charity is not remembered the shadow of who received my giving. All right. So again, so these three, right? These are the three that we talk about. So this is the third one. The 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 other person receiving uh, the charity. Uh, we don't want to remember or get oh uh, keep. Reminding them, hey, remember, I, I gave you, I, I did something good for you. I, I, I gave you uh, some money before. And, you know, so that's, again, we should not, don't even have to remember these. Anytime we, we give, actually, we just forget about it. You know, once it's done, the deed is done, just forget about the fact that whoever it is we gave to, forget it, the fact that we actually gave. Uh, and, and so uh, that that's the best best thing to do. <clears throat> and then charity is the substance of the testimony to the Bodhisattva way, okay, of the six paramitas. Uh, so it is, again, one of a, a very, you can say a very practical uh, practice, okay, so it's very, pra yeah, practical, I mean, things that we, we can do in our, in our everyday life, uh, perform charity, and so that's, uh, you can say that it has substance. Right, and it can testify to this uh, the body the way of the bodhisattvas, um, you know, and and the the six paramitas, um, because all bodhisattvas, past, present, and future, all do this, all practice charity as well. Okay, so the, because they they all practice the six paramitas, right? <clears throat> um, okay. Uh, Holy teacher says, right. So do we give naturally, or is it because of the rules that we? that we give. Okay. So again, uh, the giving has to be, you know, we have to give it, uh, perform the giving, um, very naturally. Uh, it comes from within, comes from a sincere heart. Uh, it's not because of some external force or factor or influence, uh, to push us to give. Okay. Like the rule, like there might be rules, whatever say, Oh, we, we must, uh, give. Um, so, uh, that, that's very important. The Holy teacher is emphasizing that, yeah, it has to come, just come from the heart. It's very natural to, to do it, to give, um, and it shouldn't be forced, right? Uh, Holy teacher is not talking about the money, but about true giving, right? Not looking at the amount, but whether we have a kind giving heart. Okay. So again, 
the emphasis is on the internal aspect of uh, basically our, you can say, our mindset. Um, you know, when we're giving that, it doesn't matter how much we're giving or how little we're giving, uh, as long as that heart is true and sincere. Okay, <clears throat> and that you know we're we're actually doing <clears throat> giving according to our ability, not um, again according to our ability. Also, again means it's it's not you know you don't feel like it's being forced. Okay, so that we have to oh we have to give a certain amount. Right. <clears throat> Uh, cultivation is not on the surface only, right? And the from the superficial, we we still can enter into the profound. Um, so Holy Teacher is saying, you know, pointing out again, uh, you know, his, his the previous the scripture is uh, you know, showing that, yeah, you know, uh, like for charity and giving, there are all sorts of different uh, nuances, subtle. Um, nuances to to giving and that we might you know not realize if we just look at the surface okay of, of what charity is right so so we want to actually uh as the holy teacher said earlier you know get into the the profoundness okay the the true meaning of uh whether it's the, the principles the practices you know everything um and not just stay on the superficial uh uh, meaning of things. Okay. Um, right. Okay. Uh, so uh, then, you know, Holy Teacher also mentioned that. Uh, so if we have 30% sincerity, right, heaven will give us 70%, uh, you know, will get a 70% response. So, in other words, <laughs> To, to complement the 30%, you know, to give us the, the so we get the whole 100%. And, you know, if we have the 70% sincerity, then that elicits a 100% response from heaven. So, and Holy Teacher says, well, this is this is a, a true principle, okay? So, uh, so it really all depends on our sincerity. Uh, the more sincere we are, right, the more, the greater the response from heaven. Uh, and so only, I guess, you know, I, you know, maybe it's hard, uh, well, maybe only we know and, and heaven knows how sincere we really are. Um, but ultimately it's, it's heaven, uh, is kind of <laughs> determining that, uh, making that determination of how sincere we are, uh, and to get, you know, and, and the response that we get. Okay. Mm, okay. So, um, I'm going to kind of summarize this. Okay. So. Charity is or the giving. Uh, I uh, yeah, they're, they're like the external aspect. Okay, is uh, is there, there are three types of giving that we normally talk about, right? The the material giving, which could be financial uh, um, or or other material things, right? So we can donate cash or property or other items, things like that. Um, there's the giving of Dharma or teaching, you can say teaching or propagating Tao, basically, you know, teaching, explain the Tao principles. Uh, but again, make sure we, we can also teach by example, right, without even saying anything, uh, as long as we express it in our conduct, in our actions, uh, that can also teach people, right, and it also introduce Tao to people. <clears throat> uh, and then that third one, it, Literally, it's it's the fear. It's fearless teaching. It's fearless. Okay, giving. Uh, basically, we we generally talk about that as time and effort, putting in time and effort, uh, and and but you know, giving courage to people or encouragement to to others. Okay, so giving, letting letting them have faith. Okay, right. So uh, so basically, you know, to help in any way possible to do the things that nobody else wants to do. Right. So maybe that's part of the fearless thing. It's like oh, no one's willing to do something, but I'm willing to do it. Uh, okay, like cleaning the bathroom or, or whatever, cooking, you know, things like that, uh, that maybe a, a lot of people don't want to do. Uh, uh, and then so because of that, yeah, I mean, I, th there's actually, you know, uh, I don't like to quantify merits, but, you know, the, it, it, it's better. <laughs> you can say it's, uh, okay, so, uh, and again, courage, you know, we want to give uplift, uplifting words, encouraging words, that we can perhaps increase, uh, you know, other cultivators' faith. You know, especially maybe when there are 
they're hitting some obstacle. Their 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 life, you know, things are are not doing so well uh, in their lives. Um, and obviously, we don't we we hate to see a bodhisattva does not want to see someone who was cultivating and then they meet some challenges, uh, challenging times and difficulties and hardships, and they they turn away and they stop cultivating. Uh, they don't want to see that. So so we should always when when uh, we see that there are other you know, cultivators who are in that s- a situation like that, we try to do our best to encourage them and to increase their faith so that they can continue to cultivate. Um, okay. <clears throat> and then, okay, so, and then on the, on the internal side, you can say it's relinquishment, giving up, right? So letting go of. Um, <clears throat> so we, we have to give up our ego and selfishness, right? Um, the... Okay, so like <laughs> sexual pleasures, right? Eating, food, drink, uh, sex, all these types of things, any, any type of sensual pleasure that people take pleasure in, right? <clears throat> now, like exotic fancy food, yeah. So um, there's a lot, I mean, you might, you know, a lot of people, well, why they don't become uh, like vegetarian or vegan, you know, they say, ah, they just like that, love that taste of the meat or whatever. Um, so that, you can say that that's a sensual pleasure of the of the taste buds. Okay, so uh, and we have to be willing to uh, let go of that, um, especially since you know one of the precepts is no killing, and you know so that that goes against uh, you know what we're doing. So 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 we need to uh, be able to let go. All right. <laughs> um, also, wealth and fame. Okay, so other. Uh, uh, material wealth uh, or, or fame, recognition, this type of thing. Uh, you know, we, we tend to desire, you know, have a desire for more things. Uh, basically, uh, sometimes, you know, we well, we hear a lot that like people say, oh, you know, they don't come to the temple because ah, they don't have time. They, they have to, they're making money. <laughs> they're trying to make money to, to make a living or whatever. And, uh, uh, well, you know, the, we should really self-reflect to see if, you know, is it, are all, you know, do I really need that money? I mean, what, what are the kind of, are, are the things that I need it for, or is it really necessary, right? So, so we don't, nec- so we don't want to, we don't need to li- live a luxury life, right? <clears throat> um, as long as, uh, things are okay, uh, then, you know, there's no need to try to get more. Okay, so because we we're going to end up spending our time doing that, trying to earn more money <clears throat> and less time cultivating. Okay, so and you know this this is very short sighted, right? The, the material things, well, that's only going to be good for this lifetime. Uh, after we die, it's it's all gone, and if we don't have any merits and virtues at the end because we didn't cultivate then it will have been a wasted life because we're going to have to come back and uh, <laughs> and that the next life probably won't be, may not be as good. Okay, so uh, we'd let go, get rid of our simple deeds, you know, vices, any bad habits, smoking, drinking, etc. cetera. Um, <clears throat> uh, contention and bind with others. Okay, we have to stop doing that. Uh, competing, you know, whether it's competing for attention or rewards or other things. Okay, so... So these are things that internally that we, we try to get rid of. <clears throat> um, and I think, you know, performing the charity, doing these things uh, can help us. Um, the more we do of charity, uh, I think the more it will help us uh, to, to, to achieve this, uh, 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 you know, the, the letting go, right? Because we're, we're, we're giving, the more we're able to let go on the external side, the more we will be able to let go internally as well. Okay. Uh, so, you know, the, the, the basic general purpose of charity is to overcome this miserly and selfish tendencies that, uh, you know, humans tend to ha- basically have, right? Uh, and oh, okay. uh, so <clears throat> now I'll mention that in the the Dharma class, the first two vows that we make, you can say fall under the category of, yeah, you can say that it's it's kind of charity, okay, so giving. Uh, basically, you know, the first one says, emphasize the holy of spiritual, okay, 
uh, basically we we spend more time uh, going to the temple or learn you know learning cultivating uh, participating in in the Tao affairs right so it's, that's giving up you know we're giving our time right and effort um, so that's giving also uh, in a way and then also the the, the second one is is more uh, you know more literal uh, giving of the material uh, material giving and also giving of the Dharma or teaching. Or, or you know propagating Tao that kind of stuff. So so that so again so that's why the, these are kind of the two basic vows of the Dharma class. We start with charity, right? Start with giving. Uh, that is the 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 first step um, before we get into the more um, I guess <laughs> maybe more serious ones. Okay. So the Tao is about harmonizing the yin and yang. Okay. So it's it's oneness. Right, the in, or or we want to say internal and external. Um, so we want to harmonize and or reconcile our internal state of mind with the external giving. Okay, so uh, again, that, that that was mentioned earlier, right? So and the willingness we have to have the willingness, uh, the this inner joy and rejoicing when we give, uh, and we have no attachments to um, what we're giving and who we're giving to. And no attachment to our own ego when we're giving. Say, oh, I, I look, I, I gave a lot of money, uh, so we can't have that, right? So uh, we have to let go of all of that. So once when we do that, I mean, so so again, this harmonizing. So it's not like, oh, I, you know, again, we don't just give on the external, but inside we're still holding on to it. Uh, then it's not really giving. Okay, so the harmonizing, the reconciling is that when we give on the outside, we have to give up, give on the inside as well. Um, okay. Um, so today we, we just talk about the, the first paramita. Next week we'll talk about the second one. Um, if I had said anything wrong or not well enough, I asked the Buddhas for forgiveness and also uh, ask for corrections from transmitting masters and lectures. Thank you.